Hello, I'm Jane King, and today I've got Lake Resources with me. This is an Australian-based mining company focused on the development of lithium projects. With me is the chairman of the board, Stu Crow, to tell me a little bit more about what Lake Resources is doing. So welcome, Stu. Thank you very much, Jane. It's great to be here. Yeah, great to have you. So give me an overview of the company. What is Lake Resources doing? Okay, we're a, um, an Australian listed company, but all our assets are in Argentina and primarily we're there to develop projects to produce lithium. So we're right at that stage now. We've been working on them, those projects now for three years and we've got one very advanced project that we're just about to come into our pre-feasibility study, which we hope to release in the next two weeks. And uh, with that, we'll be looking to um, move forward with our pilot plant. Uh, which we're running with our technology partner in, in California. And, and the idea of that is to test our, our process where we're using a direct extraction method to take the lithium out of the brines. So we're quite excited about coming into that phase of our development where that we'll be able to prove that the technology that we're using is really disruptive to the, the lithium industry. So we're, we're hoping to uh, demonstrate very powerfully that we can produce battery grade lithium um, without in a very very sustainable and very efficient manner. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I hear lithium, I think lithium ion batteries. I mean, yeah. so you're working with uh, electric vehicles and providing the batteries for those. So just kind of explain to me exactly what the average consumer might see your products do. Yeah. Okay. Well, the the lithium that we produce will go into the batteries, and yeah, you're right. The the big demand push that's come in recent years is the uh, introduction of electrification of transport. So with that, the cars that are going to be running primarily on lithium ion batteries in various forms, and, and that's where the growth is coming. And it, the growth is exponential. I'm not sure if you're aware, um, only maybe three, three and a half years ago, there were only three lithium ion battery factories in, in the world, and there's now 120 of them being built and in various phases of construction. So the demand for lithium is going exponential on a daily basis. You know, we've seen more and more uh, vehicles, different models coming through and increasing interest out in the wider community um, globally. And also the safety net for us is a lot of this change is being legislated. So the shift into electrification of transport is massive and it's happening globally. And, and the, the issue is to deliver the growth that's required, there simply isn't enough lithium currently available to build the batteries required to build the fleet of cars that's needed. So for us, as an emerging producer, that's really quite exciting. So whilst it's been difficult for us over the last few years to push against a, you know, the, the sea of the big, the big players trying to just monopolise that market, um, we've been pushing ahead and taking these projects towards development so we can be a part of that uh, supply chain. Mm -hmm. Well, you're right. I mean, I know Europe has had a huge legislation and push for fuel emission standards. So um, this is in the U.S. too. In fact, in California, has, there's been some debate about it, but particular states are kind of on their own timetables in terms of this. So yes. this is a, a macroeconomic trend that you're a part of. That's right. And, and you know, it's really interesting. I know, you know, in, in current times, in the, uh, the uncertainty we have with the uh, COVID-19 virus, one thing that's become a topic of conversation is supply chains and security of supply around a whole variety of uh, metals, strategic metals, globally. Because at the moment, um, the largest um, producer of lithium chemical is, of course, China. And, you know, North America being reliant on on sourcing supplies from you know China and we're seeing that also in in Europe where you know there's now a real push to try and diversify the supply source um, globally and that for us um, being in Argentina which is very close um, and has bilateral trade agreements with North America and all that type of thing it's a really interesting time for us and and as I said earlier our technology partner is based in Oakland California so and they're backed by some of the you know, some very large investors out of uh, Silicon Valley. Okay, very interesting. So tell me about, is this the, the Kachi project? Am I pronouncing it right? This is the one in well Argentina? Okay, yeah, so that's right. tell me about that. Uh, Why Argentina, how much potential does that project have? Yeah, right. Well, interestingly, uh, probably 50% historically comes from, of lithium supply, 
comes from South America, either through Chile, Argentina, or Bolivia, is what they call the lithium triangle. And then the, the other supply has previously been coming out of Australia. Um, so in Argentina, where our project, our Karchi project is, we are very fortunate, particularly at Karchi, we own the entire basin. Now that basin is 150,000 acres of, of title. So it's a massive area. It runs for 70 or 80 kilometers, you know, 60 miles in one direction and 30 miles in the other. It's an enormous basin, holds a vast amount of, of uh, lithium in the aquifer. And so we're not really miners, we're more water treatment. We take the, 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 the lithium in Argentina and South America comes in the form of a brine, mm -hmm. so a salty water. And what we do, we extract the lithium out of that water using direct extraction techniques. So it's a new it's a new way of doing it. Rather than doing it using evaporation ponds, we're using direct extraction, which is far more efficient. You know, our recovery rates of the lithium from the brine are up around the 90 to 95 percent rate, whereas the evaporators are, are getting 25 to maybe 45. Some get 50 percent on a very good day. So you know, this this is why what we're doing is disruptive, um, because it's highly efficient, but it's we're using a different method of processing the brine and the other thing is we get a very pure concentrate so the beauty of that is when you're building these high performance batteries that go into teslas and you know the high performance cars where people are uh, demanding you know good long range with the batteries um, they want very pure once i get back to the nasdaq when everything settles down we can bring you in and you can give us an update um love to so do that it'd be brilliant hopefully sooner rather than later so thank you Stu, for coming oh, my pleasure thanks yeah. so much for your time Bye. jane have a great day nice to meet thank you